Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning we are in a very wet and windy Stratford-upon-Avon. Now the plan is to go and see the final resting place of William Shakespeare, that amazing playwright, poet and actor, believe it or not. But before that we're going to go and find and have a look for his wife's cottage and have a way which I believe is up the road. Now I don't know how much access we will have to it, whether we can just film from the outside or not, um, but we'll have a little look and we'll see if we can and then we will eventually get on to find William Shakespeare's final resting place, hopefully. Um, beautiful little countryside, but we're going to have a little look now and I'll tell you some information on William Shakespeare. Most of you probably know more about him than what I do, but I'll tell you some info anyway. William Shakespeare. April 1564 to the 23rd of April 1616, was an English playwright, poet and actor. He is widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's preeminent dramatist. He is often called England's national poet and the Bard of Avon. Shakespeare was the son of John Shakespeare, an alderman and a successful glover, glove maker, originally from Snitterfield in Warwickshire, and Mary Arden, the daughter of an affluent landowning family. He was born in Stratford-upon-Avon, where he was baptised on the 26th of April 1564. His date of birth is unknown, but is traditionally observed on the 23rd of April, St George's Day. This date, which can be traced to William Oldys and George Stevens, has proved appealing to biographers because Shakespeare died on the same date in 1616. He was the third of eight children and the eldest surviving son. It is not known definitively when Shakespeare began writing, but contemporary allusions and records of performances show that several of his plays were on the London stage by 1592. By then, he was sufficiently known in London to be attacked in print by the playwright Robert Greene in his Groat's Worth of Wit from that year. There is an upstart crow, beautiful with our feathers, that with his tiger's heart wrapped in a player's hide, supposes he is as well able to bombast out a blank verse as the best of you and being an absolute Johannes factotum in his own conceit the only shake seen in a country scholars differ on the exact meaning of green's words but most agree that green was accusing shakespeare of reaching above his rank in trying to match such university educated writers such as christopher marlowe thomas nash and Green himself, the so-called university wits. The italicised phrase parodying the line O Tiger's Heart Wrapped in a Woman's Hide from Shakespeare's Henry VI, Part Three, along with the pun Shake Scene, clearly identifies Shakespeare as Green's target. As used here, Johannes Factotum, Jack of All Trades, refers to a second-rate tinkerer with the work of others rather than the more common universal genius. Green's attack is the earliest surviving mention of Shakespeare's work in the theatre. Biographers suggest that his career may have begun any time from the mid-1580s to just before Green's remarks. After 1594, Shakespeare's plays were performed only by the Lord Chamberlain's men, a company owned by a group of players, including Shakespeare, that soon became the leading playing company in London. After the death of Queen Elizabeth in 1603, the company was awarded a royal patent by the new King James I and changed its name to the King's Men. Nicholas Rowe was the first biographer to record the tradition, repeated by Samuel Johnson and Shakespeare.
So there's Anne Hathaway's cottage, but of course we couldn't get in there because it's closed for maintenance during the uh, winter period and it'll be open again in the spring. Lovely cottages though. Um, I wouldn't say no if it was up for offer to, to have, you know, as a freebie. Right now we will go and try and find William Shakespeare's final resting place, uh, providing the church is open, of course, which we know what my luck is like for churches, don't we? But hopefully it will be open and we'll be able to go in there and, uh, and I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about William Shakespeare. More of a Charles Dickens fan myself because, of course, he comes from Portsmouth. You know, not that I'm being biased or anything like that. Okay, so we've now come to the Holy Trinity Church and we are going to see if we can find the final resting place of William Shakespeare. Um, quite a funky little town, little village, whatever you want to call it, um, Stratford-upon-Avon. But we're going to have a look, see if we can get in, see if we can say hello to old Wills and uh, have a look around, shall we? He was still working as an actor in London in 1608, in an answer to the Shares petition in 1635. Cuthbert Burbridge stated that after purchasing the lease of Blackfriars Theatre in 1608 from Henry Evans, the King's men placed men players there, which were Hemmings, Condell, Shakespeare, etc. However, it is perhaps relevant that the bubonic plague raged in London throughout 1609. The London public playhouses were repeatedly closed during extended outbreaks of the plague. A total of over 60 months closure between May 1603 and February 1610, which meant there was often no acting work. Retirement from all work was uncommon at the time. Shakespeare continued to visit London during the years 1611 to 1614. In 1612, he was called as a witness in Bellot versus Mountjoy, a court case concerning the marriage settlement of Mountjoy's daughter, Mary. In March 1613, he bought a gatehouse in the former Blackfriars Priory and from November 1614, he was in London for several weeks with his son-in-law, John Hall. After 1610, Shakespeare wrote fewer plays and none that are attributed to him after 1613. His last three plays were collaborations probably with John Fletcher, who succeeded him as the house playwright of the King's Men. He retired in 1613 before the Globe Theatre burnt down during the performance of Henry VIII on the 29th of June. Shakespeare died on the 23rd of April 1616 at the age of 52. He died within a month of signing his will, a document which he begins by describing himself as being in perfect health. No extent contemporary source explains how or why he died. Half a century later, John Ward, the vicar of Stratford, wrote in his notebook, Shakespeare, Drayton and Ben Jonson had a merry meeting and it seems drank too hard. For Shakespeare died of a fever there contracted. Not an impossible scenario since Shakespeare knew Jonson and Drayton. One of the tributes from fellow authors, one refers to his relatively sudden death. We wondered, Shakespeare that thou went so soon from the world stage to the grave's tiring room. He was survived by his wife and two daughters. Susanna had married a physician, John Hall, in 1607, and Judith, who married Thomas Queenie, a vintner, two months before Shakespeare's death. Shakespeare signed his last will and testament on the 25th of March, 1616. The following day, Thomas Queenie, his new son-in-law, was found guilty of fathering an illegitimate son by Margaret Wheeler, both of whom had died during childbirth. Thomas was ordered by the church courts to do public penance, which would have caused much shame and embarrassment for the Shakespeare family.
Now, <clears throat> I've had a good look around the church and uh, the main gate seems to be locked. Obviously there's a tour guide going on there, but there's an office over the road, so I'm gonna go and ask them. But it doesn't appear like you can actually get in. There's a church, it's closed, it's bonkers. Which, you know, it's whatever, it's half past 11 or whatever, on a Thursday. Um, and it's like proper Fort Knox, you know? So I'm gonna pop in over the road, see what the situation is, and then come back and, and let you know. Okay, so I've just been into the office there and um, it's closed it's not open to the public until Saturday now I did try some charm I did explain I've driven up from Portsmouth two and a half hour drive but you know when you just get that complete blank that's the sort of look I just had from the lady in the office um, I tried explaining you know I, what I do um, and said that people like to see it and there's lots of people that can't get out of the house that would you know um, would love to see Shakespeare's final resting place um, but sadly it fell on deaf ears so on this occasion we've got to see the Holy Trinity Church we've got to see Anne Hathaway's cottage got to see the beautiful River Avon of course uh, but sadly we've been let down and you know it doesn't take much just to open a door to let a wee cameraman like me <laughs> slip in just to take a photo video you know what I mean um, in the actual church itself but obviously it wasn't meant to be anyway what I will do guys and girls is the next time I'm up in this region I shall make sure that I come on a time when they're open to the public and then I will come in and film to his final resting place. But at least today we've heard about him. Uh, but sadly, we can't physically get in there. And it's such a shame when things like that happen. Um, you know, especially after driven all this way and then to get turned down like that. But never mind. That's one of those things that happen sometimes, isn't it? And it's one of those things that, you know, we sort of, get used to when we're doing this line of work but there you go anyway if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel <laughs> i love people watching and uh yeah if you haven't done so already leave your comments down below can't win them all the time can we I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy.